Hello students, in this video we will solve a physics specimen paper 2. This is for Cambridge IGCSE paper code 062502. This question has been solved in paper 1 also and uh, there was some typing error. So I have solved this question again in this video and this is a part of paper 2 also. So let's check. A length of a string is measured between two points on a ruler. When the length of a string is wound closely around a pen, it goes round 6 times. So length of a string is 15.6 minus 2.4. This is 13.2 cm. Number of turns 6. What is the distance once round the pen? So width of one turn, basically you have to calculate and width of one turn is equal to length of a string divided by total number of turns. It is 13.2 divided by 6, 2.2 cm. Option A is the correct one. When does an object falling vertically through the air reach terminal velocity? So when the drag force, air resistance, and force due to weight are equal then the net force on the object becomes zero and the object falls at a steady rate known as the terminal velocity so option c is the correct one when the air resistance equals the weight of the object i suggest you to please watch my detailed video where we have discussed uh, terminal velocity and drag force and free fall of objects Question 3. An athlete runs a 100 meter race in a straight line. The table shows how his speed changes with time for the first 5.0 second of the race. What is the average acceleration of the athlete between time 2 seconds and time 3 seconds? 2.0 and 3.0. So average acceleration we know it is change in speed between time 2 and 3. Change in time. This is 3 minus 2. For 1 second we have to calculate. And change in speed is 5.7 minus 4.1. So this is 1.6 meter per second square. Option A, A is the right one. The gravitational field strength on the moon is 1.6 newton per kilogram. An astronaut has a mass of 75 kilogram. What is the weight of the astronaut on the moon? We know W, the weight is equal to mg. So, mass is given, mass is 75 kilogram and g, the gravitational field strength is 1.6. 1.6 multiplied by 75, it is 120 newton. Option C is the correct one. A ball of mass 0.12 kilogram is hit by a tennis player. The velocity of the ball changes from 0 meter per second to 5 meter per second in 0 0.60 second. What is the resultant? Average resultant force acting on the ball while it is being hit. So this is the equation for impulse. Ft is equal to change in momentum. M v minus u. V is the final velocity and u is the initial velocity. Again, uh, please watch my video where we have discussed in detail. Impulse is equal to change in momentum. And then we can use this equation. So F is equal to change in momentum divided by T. 0 0.12 is the mass. V is the final velocity 5. U is the initial velocity 0 times 0 0.60. So force F is equal to 1 Newton. A balloon and a mass are attached to a rod that is pivoted at a fixed point P. The balloon is filled with helium, which is a gas that is less dense than air. The balloon filled with helium applies an upward force on the rod. The rod is horizontal and in equilibrium, which action causes the rod to rotate clockwise. So here given that the system is in equilibrium. In equilibrium means the anti-clockwise movement is equal to the clockwise movement. As the balloon, the force of balloon uh, makes an clockwise movement and this marks rotate the system anti-clockwise. So, uh, since the system is stable, is in equilibrium, so Fb multiplied by 30 is equal to the mass multiplied by the distance from the pivot 20. So, we can calculate Fm, the force due to this mass. This will be equal to Fb multiplied by 1.5. This is the relationship 
uh, which we can uh, calculate from the given condition that the system is in equilibrium. So let's take uh, any arbitrary value. If we have take uh, taken here fm is equal to 15 kilogram let's take this is just an arbitrary value to to solve because they have not asked us to calculate the exact moment but the effect of the moment so let's take here so fb will be 10 kg because this is a relationship the force of balloon is upward which gives rise to a clockwise moment and the weight of rod is downward giving the rod an anti-clockwise moment for the rod to rotate clockwise because which action causes the rod to rotate clockwise the movement of the balloon should be larger than the movement produced by the weight of the rod so the movement of the balloon if we apply the condition to here you can check with other conditions also ACT but if we apply the condition B here moving the balloon to the 20 centimeter mark so the movement of the balloon will be uh, 20 multiplied by 10 because we have taken any arbitrary value this is 200 newton meter and the movement of the weight will be if the mass to the 10 centimeter the distance 10 multiplied by 15 we have taken the value of fm 15 and there is a relationship that fm is equal to fb multiplied by uh, 1.5 this will be the relationship the, this ratio you have to maintain so this is 150 newton meter in in this case the movement of the balloon is larger than the movement of the weight you can check with these arbitrary value other conditions also but option b satisfies option b fulfills the criteria here so option b is the right one an object of mass 0.16 kilogram is moving forwards at a speed of 0 0.50 meter per second Our object a second object of mass 0 0.10 kilogram is at rest. The first object strikes the second object. After the collision, the second object moves forward at a speed of 0 0.50 meter per second. What is the speed of the first object after collision? So total momentum before collision is equal to total momentum after collision. This is the conservation of momentum, law of conservation of momentum. And this uh, law says that the momentum will be conserved total momentum will be conserved so m1 u1 we will use this equation m1 u1 plus m2 u2 where m1 is the mass of first object m2 is the mass of second object u1 u2 are the velocity before collision and v1 v2 are the velocity or after collision of object 1 and 2 and m1 m2 are their respective masses so before collision m1 is 0.16 and the velocity of 0.16 kilogram and it is it is a forward speed it is 0 0.50 meter per second so u1 is 0 0.50 m2 is 0 0.10 and m2 is at rest so u2 is 0 after collision what happens that m mass mass masses will be same so m1 m2 are 0.16 and 0.10 but v2 is given v2 has uh, v2 is 0 0.50 and the the direction of v2 is the same as the direction of v1 means the direction of motion has not been changed for v2 so this will be the positive sign of v2 v2 is 0 0.50 we have to calculate v1 0.16 put all the values in this equation and v2 is 0.19 meter per second while calculating momentum Please pay attention in deciding the direction of motion because that will give you the idea of the sign of velocity. After collision, the object, the second object has not changed its direction because uh, earlier the direction of motion was, a, uh, they have given that the forward uh, is moving forward at a speed and after collision, the second object also moves forwards at a speed. So both directions are uh, same that's why u1 and v2 uh, would share the same sign of velocity a ball is at rest at the top of a hill the ball rolls down the hill at the bottom of the hill the ball hits a wall and a, and a stop which energy changes occur this is a simple one this is option b gravitational potential energy because the, the ball is at rest then 
its kinetic energy and then its internal energy. A submarine is a boat that can travel below the surface of a sea. A submarine is 20 meter below the surface of the sea. The pressure due to the sea water at this depth is P, capital P. On another day, the submarine is 26 meter below the surface of fresh water. The density of sea water is 1.3 times the density of fresh water. What is the pressure due to the fresh water at a depth of 26 meter? So let's say this is a pressure uh, formula. Pressure is equal to rho g h at a depth h. Rho is the density, g is gravitational field strength and h is the depth. So uh, the pressure for sea water is equal to rho g at which is given its capital P rho g multiplied by h 20 meter. This, let's take this equation 1. The pressure for fresh water will be again rho g h h we can use this equation and the density of fresh water is equal to density of rho uh, density of sea water divided by 1.3 multiplied by g multiplied by 26 the h is given here this is 26 depth solve this equation you get p so pressure of water is equal to p we can put the value of rho g from equation 1 and equation 2, rho g is equal to P by 20. Put the value of rho g here and solve, you will get P w is equal to P. Here P w stands for pressure for water, P s pressure for C water and capital P is given here. So it's a simple one. When particles of a gas collide with a wall of container, the wall experiences a pressure. What is the cause of this pressure? So when the gas molecules collide with the walls of a container, due to this collision, the molecules impart momentum to the walls, producing a force perpendicular to the wall and thus the pressure. The pressure of the gas is then a measure of the average linear momentum of the moving molecules of a gas. So the change in momentum of the particles is the correct word answer. Option B is the correct. Copper is a type of metal. A block of copper has a mass of 2 kg. The block of copper absorbs 1200 joule of thermal energy. 12,000 joule of thermal energy. The specific heat capacity of copper is 385 joule per kilogram degree centigrade. What is the temperature rise of the copper? This is a relationship Q is equal to mc delta T where Q is the heat energy, m is mass, T is specific heat capacity and delta T is change in temperature. Q is 12,000 joule, M is 2 kilogram and C the specific heat capacity. Everything is given here, put in the formula and calculate delta T. It is 15.6 degree centigrade. Which row about boiling and about evaporation is correct? Boiling is a bulk process where a liquid changes to its vapor or gaseous form at a certain temperature. This certain temperature is called the boiling point. At sea level, water boils at 100 degrees centigrade. 100 degrees centigrade is the boiling point of water. Evaporation is a surface process where a liquid changes to its vapor or gas below the boiling point. Water can evaporate at any temperature. So here option C says for boiling takes place throughout the liquid it is a bulk process we have discussed and for evaporation takes place only at the surface. So option C tells you the right story here. Light travels at a speed of 2.0 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. It means speed is given and the wavelength of the light is given. You have to calculate the frequency of the light. We know the relationship is speed is equal to wavelength multiplied by frequency. Frequency is equal to speed divided by wavelength. Is speed and wavelength given here. So frequency is 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 14 hertz. Option D. Many questions from paper 1 are repeated in paper 2. We have not solved those questions. So I advise you to please watch a video of paper 1 for all those questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this video and please like, share and subscribe and keep watching. Thank you very much once again.